Hello everyone. Here we are going to discuss a very important topic that is megaloblastic anemia. You frequently get a long question on megaloblastic anemia in your university exam. You have to write down everything about it, starting from introduction, etiology, pathogenesis, clinical features, lab diagnosis, treatment, everything. So we are going to discuss everything here about the megaloblastic anemia. <laughs> You can see here we are starting the topic megaloblastic anemia. So first of all, learn the overview. Under what headings you have to describe your answer, it's very important. Overview of all chapters is ultra important. You have to understand the overview. So first of all, I will let you know the introduction of megaloblastic anemia. What is megaloblastic anemia? Then I will tell you its etiology, then its pathogenesis, then its clinical feature, lab diagnosis, and finally treatment. So it's ultra important and let's start it. So before understanding the topic, let's revise erythropoiesis. How does RBC get synthesized? We know in the we are having three cells the rbc's the wbc's and the platelets how does rbc's are synthesized all the three cells are synthesized in the bone marrow the first cell is hematopoietic stem cell can you see this is hematopoietic stem cell so hematopoietic stem cell give rise to myeloblast myeloblast give rise to pronormoblast it give rise to early intermediate and late normoblast finally reticulocyte is formed and finally rbc is formed the same you can see it here i have drawn it for you you can see the same thing which i told you here also so the first cell in the bone marrow is hematopoietic stem cell hematopoietic stem cell give rise to myeloblast myeloblast give rise to pronormoblast it is giving rise to early intermediate and late normoblast finally reticulocyte is formed and rbc is formed so this is a complete erythropoiesis you can see now let me tell you something do rbcs have nucleus rbc after formation Finally, RBCs are coming in the blood. The precursors don't come in the blood. The final product, the RBC, the erythrocyte is coming in the blood. So I'm asking you a question. Do RBC have a nucleus? Of course, the answer is no. RBCs are non-nucleated cell. But the precursors have the nucleus. Can you see this hematopoietic stem cell? It have the nucleus. Have a look. The myeloblast have the nucleus. So till what stage the nucleus is present? So nucleus is there in hematopoietic stem cell, myeloblast, pronormoblast, early, intermediate, but not in late. At the late normoblast stage, it is enucleated out. Enucleation or ex extrusion of the nucleus takes place at late normoblast stage. Please mind it, highlight it. And after that, the last two one that is retic and RBC are non-nucleated. Neither the retic have the nucleus nor the RBC have the nucleus. So this is normal. Nucleus is made up of DNA. I guess everyone knows the nucleus is made up of DNA. So DNA is required for all these, the initial. So ultimately, the summary is that the summary is that to understand megaloblastic anemia, what is required here? Please understand that thing. So RBCs are non-nucleated. We all know, but for the synthesis of RBC, we require its precursor. RBC cannot be synthesized directly. So for the synthesis of RBC, we require its precursor and the precursors have the nucleus. So the DNA is required, the precursors in the precursors for the synthesis of RBC, not directly, but indirectly. So let's start the topic megaloblastic anemia. What is megaloblastic anemia? In megaloblastic anemia, the person have one of the two deficiency. Either vitamin B12 is deficient or folic acid deficient. So either the person is not eating vitamin B12 or folic acid or both of them, or they are eating it properly, but they are not absorbed. So ultimately the blood of the person is deficient of one of them or both of them. So the blood either do not contain vitamin B12 enough or the blood do not contain folic acid. Either the problem is in the intake, the intake is not proper, or the problem is in the absorption. The absorption is not proper. Pro proper, Whatever it is, both of them are required for the synthesis of DNA. For the synthesis of DNA. So, DNA will not form. And DNA is required for nucleus synthesis. So, nucleus will not form. You will say, ma'am, no problem, RBC don't have nucleus. So, what is the problem here? RBC don't have nucleus. I agree. But the precursors of the RBC till late normal blast stage, they have the nucleus. If nucleus will be absent, how the precursors will be formed? If precursor cannot be formed, how the RBC will be formed? And that will lead to anemia. So here the main cause of the anemia's DNA synthesis is impaired because vitamin B12 or folic acid are deficient. You will say, ma'am, which step of DNA is required vitamin B12 or folic acid? You know, DNA is having um, four things, four nucleotide, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and what is the fourth one? The fourth one is thymidine. Have you ever thought how does thymidine is synthesized? You may have read this in biochemistry. How does thymidine is synthesized? The thymidine is synthesized from uracil. So for the conversion of uracil to thymidine, we require vitamin B12 and folic acid both. If any of them is deficient or both of them are deficient, uracil will not convert into thymidine. So thymidine will not form, so DNA will not form, so nucleus will not form and that will lead to anemia. So please understand the meaning. What is megaloblastic anemia? Megaloblastic anemia is an anemia which occurs due to deficiency of vitamin B12 and folic acid. So vitamin B12 is deficient, folic acid is deficient or both of them are deficient. So DNA will not form because they are required for DNA synthesis. And since DNA will not form, person will have anemia. Such anemia is megaloblastic anemia. Now you can understand, you can understand like this. Listen, listen. In this diagram, you have understood this.